The last six months have laid bare fundamental gaps and inequities within our societies and between them. As with climate change, those who have the least are impacted the most. That's why last spring, Canada worked with Prime Minister Andrew Holness and Secretary General Antonio Guterres to convene a high-level meeting to discuss how leaders around the world could work together to close these gaps and build a better, more equitable system that works for everyone. This pandemic has provided an opportunity for a reset. This is our chance to accelerate our pre-pandemic efforts to reimagine economic systems that actually address global challenges like extreme poverty, inequality, and climate change. Building back better means getting support to the most vulnerable while maintaining our momentum on reaching the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the SDGs. is here to listen and to help. Markham White is one of the people that brought to our attention the phrase, you will own nothing and you will be happy. My question is, if I don't own anything, then who does? Who controls the resources? Well, it seems like the most obvious answer is the very people who practically own everything now, i.e. members of the World Economic Forum. No conspiracy, just factual and well-stated intentions. Yeah, I'm a bit concerned. Well, Markham, I share your concerns and I share your diagnosis. Now is a historical moment, a time, not only to fight severe virus, but to shape the system. We have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity to learn lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. It is an opportunity we have never had before and may never have again. So we must use all the levers we have at our disposal, knowing that each and every one of us has a vital role to play. Now is the time to think what history would say about this crisis. And now is the time for all of us to define our own role. What is it that would make it so that history would look at this crisis as the great opportunity for reset? The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. It is imperative that we reimagine, rebuild, redesign, reinvigorate and rebalance our world. The Great Reset articulates how United Nations Agenda 21 and Agenda 2030 will radically restructure everything throughout the whole world. Now, Agenda 21, it's 21 for the 21st century, which we are now, but it's they crafted the term Agenda 21 in 1992 at the Rio Earth Summit. And basically, amongst the goals was to save the planet, you've got to deny most of the Earth to humans and confine people mainly in cities, urban settlements, and prevent people needing motorized transport. So simplify things that people can walk or cycle and so on, or use mass transportation, but basically to get rid of private farms, private uh, transport, and to make everyone depend on the state. Now, Gender 21 is a program that's run by the United Nations for what they call sustainable development. And they've got 40 chapters in this document, and it's designed as the philosophy to bring all human beings on the globe under the control of a very narrow elite, basically concentrated in the United Nations and ancillary groups. 
It elevates nature above mankind and contains a little ditty called the precautionary principle where you are guilty till proven innocent, which violates our Christian principle of being innocent till proven guilty. Basically, Agenda 21 wants to end national sovereignty. No more nations. Abolish private ownership property. You will own nothing and you will be happy. The restructuring of the family unit, by that they mean the abolition of the family. Increased restrictions and limitations on mobility, no private transport, hence make fuel incredibly expensive, put more and more tax on fuel so that people find it more and more difficult to have private transport, so you depend on state transport, general transport, or that you walk or use bicycle. Uh, human beings are to be basically urbanized, get them out of the rural areas, abolish farms, move people into urban settlement zones, as they call it. And basically, they don't want any irrigation. That's why they don't even want you to have a borehole on your property. No, nope. that, that makes you independent. And the goal is ultimately a global welfare state where everybody will be dependent upon a global state for everything. Now, they've put 17 sustainable development goals and it all looks great. No poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education. I mean, this all just sounds great and you could just, I think, you know, applause at the end of each one. However, somebody who's analyzed this has put it better. Welfare dependence is number one. Uh, GMOs, uh, it doesn't produce seeds that you can use again. You've got to go back and get new ones. Forced vaccinations is what they mean for good health. Mass indoctrination is what they mean by education. Uh, destroy the family unit is what they mean by gender equality. Uh, water rationing is what they mean when they say clean water and sanitation. They talk about water rationing. Uh, smart grid surveillance and massive increase of inflation. Your money's got to get less and less worthwhile. Basically destroy people's savings and earnings. Restricted transport. Communism, basically. You know, what they call reduced inequalities. That's a nice word for communism. Prison cities, because they want you in what they call sustainable cities. Sustainable cities, another word for prison cities. Or smart cities is another term they like to use. A planned economy is what they mean when they speak, say responsible consumption and production. Uh, it's not what you think. It's not responsible at all. Energy rationing is what we understand as a blackout or power failure. But they want to control wildlife, they want to control resources, and when they say peace, justice, and strong institutions, think perpetual war. And when they're speaking about partnership for the goals, think global government. I mean, that's what Agenda 21 is. Hello, welcome to BBC World News. Italy has become the first country in Europe to make it compulsory for all workers to have a Covid green pass. From mid-October, around 23 million people will need to prove they've been vaccinated. The last protest by unvaccinated health workers against a government that has suspended them from work and is on the point of making vaccinations mandatory. From Sunday, if you're over 60 and still unjabbed, the fine will be 100 euros a month, every month. Very soon, it's expected to apply to over 50s as well. she goes, Oh Young How You is followed. What she buys, how she behaves, is tracked and scored to show how responsible and trustworthy she is. It's called the social credit system, and in one version now being tested, a person's reputation is scored on a scale of 350 to 950. And How You, with a good score of 752, is okay with it. In fact, most people are. It's a mechanism like uh, pushes you to become a better citizen. It's big data meets big brother, expanding how the government monitors, understands, and ultimately controls its 1.4 billion citizens. Thanks to advances in artificial intelligence and facial recognition, 
and a web of more than 200 million surveillance cameras. If you have posted a negative thing on social media or you have liked something that is, you will lose points. And after a certain amount of points, you can get into trouble. And so you go and you try to get a loan for this or whatever, or you want to get promoted or you want to get passed into the next standard or grade. But you made these and these comments on social media. You've lost these points. You wore the wrong T-shirt. You ordered the wrong thing. You read the wrong website. You and literally, your social credit system, which they bring into action in Australia, they want to bring into Canada, they've got it in China, this is being advocated, that if you need the state for everything, they can now spy on everything, control everything, and big tech, big government, big pharma, they're all working together. And in this way, if you don't tow the line, they will make sure you stop. That, that's their goal. This is what cafe culture now looks like in Paris. Police roaming the streets, checking that people have a license to dine. Patrons need to show proof of vaccination, immunity or a negative test before taking a seat at their favourite cafe. Most people comply, but not everyone's happy about it. So our neighbours to the north are clearly losing it. The Prime Minister, who needs a history lesson and a haircut, has declared war on Canadian citizens like they're an ISIS caliphate. Emergency powers, freezing bank accounts, and threatening to take away protesters' dogs and children. In his book, COVID and the Great Reset, Schwab insists that life must never be allowed to return to normal. The world as we knew it in the early months of 2020 is no more, dissolved in the context of a pandemic. He also said the pandemic represents a rare but narrow window of opportunity to reflect, reimagine and reset our world. The most important issue, the most important thing is to get thought criminals like us to think differently. We have to bring our thinking and behavior into harmony. So forget about this diversity and respecting different people's opinions. There's only one opinion that you can have. You know what, this is appalling. I live in a city. Uh, I'm not originally from Australia. I came to live here for what I thought was going to be a beautiful country and a beautiful life and it has been until now and now this is tyranny this is total and utter control this is I've got three kids they're all struggling they're all seeing a therapist because I can't their mental health is just I can't even work I've had two weeks of no of not being able to work and I look around me and people are struggling massively and all I can see is such control such tyranny such it's just it's it's too much <laughs> 